Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, amazing. Uh, we're in, this is actually going to be a little bit different. So we're in our Practical Holiness series. We're about ready to close it out. Um, I, I think the, the Lord shall tell we got two more sessions. Uh, this week, I decided to, I'm, I'm going out of place uh, just because of the uh, travel that we're doing. Um, I didn't want to be on the road and um, not be able to put the appropriate time into study. And so we're going to jump out of order, uh, and uh, I don't know what to call him, uh, Minister, Elder, Brother Jamal Wright's going to cover um, uh, next Sunday, Lord willing. But I was already, he was already studying, a amen. Anyway, today we're going out of order. I'm going to go over Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, and then Lord willing, uh, Jamal will double back, and I think he'll have chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Um so if you can, if you guys are okay with that, uh, amen, that's what we'll do. Amen. I want to, uh, I'll read this passage. I'm in King James Version today. Amen. Amen. For all y'all with paper Bibles, I see Sister Courtney got her little, little giveaway New Testament. Amen. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. And I'll read it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name has cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to, if the, the Lord will allow me to, take a look at this passage, maybe in a different light than, than I would have. Um, I've been really praying about this and how to, you know, dig in here and, and find some juice to extract for us to be able to be nourished. And I think this, this passage is, it's fairly straightforward on the surface, even though I will admit for several years, I had a very bad understanding of what this was. Uh, matter of fact, I'll confess for y'all, because my mother looked at me like, really? You know, in my mind, the, the, the workers of iniquity didn't have the Holy Ghost. And that was probably because I was also self-righteous and I wanted to be better than the workers of iniquity. And so if I make it as simple as me having the Holy Ghost as simple as they don't, then I could feel good about my self-righteousness. Amen. Um, and I think I had that understanding for far too long. Um, mm -hmm. If anybody has that understanding, let me, uh, don't be offended, but that's not what it means. Uh, I'm not going to go again into the, at a high, I'm going to dig in deeper and look at something, something specific in this today. Uh, amen. Um, and so, you know, I, I, when I have historically read this, the thing that always comes to my mind is, I, uh, is like an individual that begins to use uh, the spiritual gifts to create a platform for themselves. Um, you know, I start to think about like large healing, uh, faith healing revivals and in sessions uh, where people are like, hey, you know, come to this thing tonight, you're going to receive a miracle, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be healed and all these things. Uh, that's what comes on my mind. I see something like that, somebody going forth, uh, creating celebrity for themselves. Um, we all know many people profit um, uh, and have made merchandises out of God's people, uh, have profit from their gifts and abilities uh, and the things of God, exploiting the people of God um, when we're, this is a free gift. But um, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about this. Um, now, I do, I would like to say and lend to the idea that I think a lot of times uh, when we see these large like tent revivals and people getting healed, we think it's fake. Let me tell you. Um, I can't say that I've been at one where something real happened, but I've heard testimony of a brother who ministered at one, and uh, my spirit agreed with his spirit on with the testimony he gave. Um, matter of fact, uh, I've said this my, as a testimony before, uh, through what he shared with us, I went to another level in my faith, and I began to take, that's when I began to really study, because I understood that you had to be prepared to be able to uh, receive people to be that they would be blessed and be healed the way the Lord wills for them. Um, amen. Um, and so 
there is a reality that there are people that have these particular gifts and that can absolutely uh, lay hands on the sick and they be healed all day long. And a lot of them have taken that gift and gone somewhere else with it. You know, we often talk talk about people who started off with a very humble ministry. It was really spirit led. And then they begin to get some celebrity and these things start to happen. Um, and, and, and then, of course, they, they go away from God because it's you can get, you know, if I say the truth and 10 people visit on a Sunday, one might stay. But if I just kind of make it a little bit easier and 10 people show up, I can get not eight, seven. They start to do numbers and every every family in this particular demographic has a median income of this. So every family that we get to come to our church becomes to be this much for our budget for next year and all these things that we know that, again, making merchandise and making business uh, of church, we see it uh, far too often. You know, I've said this and I, and I had to repent this week. You know, I've said this several times that Matthew 7, 23 is, this, is one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible. Um, and the reason why I say I, I repent is because that should not be so. <laughs> it is a harsh reality for some. But the only way I could be afraid of that thing is if I think it could be part of my future and I'm not claiming that. So all my brothers and sisters, if you've ever heard me say this and maybe you found yourself saying it as well, I watched a YouTube video. Another brother was saying it. I'm like, oh, no, we do, we missed the mark. If we have fear, why? Because perfect love casteth out fear. When the love of Christ is perfected in us, we should fear nothing, not even the Matthew 7, 23, because I know, amen, that my relationship and my love for him and his love for me, amen, has brought me to a place where I'm not a worker of iniquity and I'm not someone he doesn't know, but I know him and he knows me because he called me by name and he keeps me as much as y'all was giving glory this morning. He is keeping us and he is sustaining us. What should we fear? Amen. What should we fear? So I, I uh, if uh, I want to ask anybody, I don't know if that's a bad habit. If you hear me uh, say Matthew 7, 23, it's scary again. Uh, please text me, call me. Uh, matter of fact, come off a mute and be like, Brother Isaac, we can't fear that. We won't fear that. Uh, amen. Because the Lord is surely with us. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Got my, uh, amen, my crew is, 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 is doing something here. Now, what I want to do um, is talk about this uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23 um, from a different lens today. And I got three or four points that I might make. Um, and let's just see what the Lord does for us. Now, there's interesting verb, words in here. Uh, when these people say that, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we cast out things? Didn't we? Didn't we uh, heal? Didn't we do these things in your name? Now, uh, Lord willing, Brother brother Jamal next week is going to talk about the false prophets, and you'll know them by their fruit. Um, now, I don't want to trip my brother up, but I want to lend to the brothers and sisters that the fruit um, is not that I laid hands on someone and they were healed. Come on. Now, the reason why I want to say this because you, we know Jesus was fruitful, but oftentimes what we heard him say is your faith has made you whole. Your faith has healed you. Now, that doesn't mean that my prayer and what I've said and laying on my hands don't have the power, amen, to do something. But I think uh, oftentimes as saints, we have come to the point where we're wise enough to be able to uh, do what the Bible says, to observe people and that we'll know them by their fruit. And the Bible says that uh, specifically with prophecy that we should uh, test everything by the spirit. And I think not only just a prophecy, but even somebody's message like this one today, amen, tested by the spirit, see if the, it jives with the Holy Ghost inside of you, amen. But one, one of the things that we make the critical mistake of is we look for increase as fruit. Yes. Increase belongs to God. I'm not responsible for the increase. I'm responsible to say the words of life. I'm, I'm, I'm responsible to speak faith. I'm responsible to speak truth. These are my fruit. The increase, amen, is not on me. I have to plant and I have to water, but God gives the increase. And so why I say this is because many of us, amen, if we're not wise, could be deceived by these same workers of iniquity. And why? Because our, our, the way that we typically measure somebody's ministry is by quantifiable things that you can observe and touch. 
We was like, oh, we went to this church and they had a thousand people. They must be teaching the truth. Maybe or maybe not. Or uh, I saw a, a brother or sister, amen, that there was a man that was dead. He laid hands, amen, prayed over that thing. And that man woke up and, and rose. Now, I've, absolutely, this comes, amen, as the power of God's people. I don't want nobody to think that, that, that that's not. However, what we shouldn't then say is that man or woman that prayed on that dead person must be with God. I can let my guard down and follow them and listen to them. Amen. Amen. Come on. Why? Because these same people that do healing, miracles, signs, and wonders are yet workers of iniquity. That doesn't make sense to our elementary uh, thinking about how, how to understand who belongs to God and who doesn't. We don't get that because we want, well, I saw, uh, you know, he prayed and the whole church started shouting and, and cutting the rug. Uh, he must be called to preach. No, that doesn't mean that. Those people just might have been prepared uh, and they was ready to hear a word. And, and you, uh, <laughs> you could have just came in and said, uh, just pick up the first Bible in the beginning and they was ready to shout because some people are just on fire like that. It don't, I, hear a, I, hear, I hear a word from God and I'm shouting. You know, you, you might watch the soap operas and a particular sequence of words that I heard in the, script, uh, in, the, in, the, in the scripture and just start shouting because some people are prepared for that. But it doesn't mean that the person that said it out of their mouth, amen, is from God. Now, let me go a little bit farther because uh, I got some I got some eyeballs looking at me like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So let's go a little bit further. Uh, Romans chapter 11, verses 28 through 29. If somebody on the internet every now and again, give us something. Uh, make sure our audio is good. Romans chapter 11, verses 28 through 29. 28 and 29. Verses. If my truth was here, I'd be okay to say verses because there's two of them. Amen. I'm going with my truth. Uh, Matt, the Romans chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now, I, I misunderstood this for a long time. Now, when it, when it says the, the 28 is kind of irrelevant, but let me, let me fill that in. Uh, he's talking about Israel. And that because of the disobedience of Israel, that the, that the Gentiles were able to come into the church and that because God had promised it. So he's telling, he's telling, Paul is saying through, through Israel, his gifts and calling are without repentance. Now, um, if you're careful, you might think that the repentance of the person receiving it. No, that was my mistake for a long time. I thought that the gifts and calling were God for me, even if I don't repent. No, what it means is that when God says, I'm going to give you something, he won't repent. When he gives you the free gift, it's yours. This is why Paul relates it to the promise that he did through Israel. Because he said it, God's not going to go back on his word. His word won't return to him void. And it's the same thing. Now, the first example I have is really one that you want, wouldn't even think about. But if you even think about Lucifer, he had power in heaven. Um, amen. We, 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 we are, we're told that he could sing. Amen. That, that would... Uh, I don't know. I want to compare it to something that we would say, but I can't even think of nothing. But he can sing. How about that? Um, and that when he would sing, that the people would be encouraged and the angels would be encouraged and the angels rejoice. And he began to get all this appeal. Amen. Uh, and then he took that the wrong way, got prideful about it because he, the Lord had given him a gift and got himself kicked out. Now, when he got to earth, amen, Satan still has power. Now, this is not, Brother Isaac's no theologian that have gone to pro specifically say this. I'm going to write this in pencil, and y'all go ahead and study it. If I'm wrong, tell me. Um, but I'm not saying that this is absolute truth. But we don't have a scripture that says that, that whatever sort of power that Satan had in heaven and was stripped from him on earth, we know for certain he has power in earth, though. The Lord said he's a prince in power of the air. He has power here. I'd like to say it was the same, some, some of the same power he had there. Now, he got there. He got prideful. He got himself kicked out of heaven. But the gifts and calling are without repentance. That makes sense? And so Satan still has some of those gifts and callings here on the earth to trip us up if we're not wise. Amen. So when, when God gives, gives us a gift, amen, it's ours. Now, I'm going to throw this in there. It's nowhere in my notes. I am of the belief that spiritual gifts come from people that have his spirit. 
So a lot of people that don't have a spirit, they claim they have a, a, a spiritual gift, maybe not. Now, some people have natural gifts that God gives them, like singing. Uh, some people could just talk. Some people have artistic gifts. But when we talk about word of wisdom, word of faith, word of knowledge, gift of healing, tongues, interpretation, those that are mentioned in, I believe, Galatians, uh, <laughs> those come from those who have received the spirit. Which means, go to my other point, they had repented at some point. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? They had repented. They had been filled with the Spirit. They had got some particular gifts. Amen. And God gave them. You think about, you know, I've seen this, and I, and I, and I hope this doesn't come off as if it's funny. But I remember uh, when we lived in this particular community, and I must have been about 13 years old, and behind us, um, some people moved in, and they were actively on drugs, but they also had a background in the church. And they could, the husband and wife, they could sing, could sing, could sing, could sing, could sing, like anointed singing. And when you hear particular people like that, you're like, man, God, God must be with them. Look how they can sing, and everybody responds. But yet they were actively on drugs. And this is what we see oftentimes. We see where particular uh, pastors usually, let's think, I'm thinking of a pastor, that they have a, a powerful ministry. It's anointed. It's, it's anointed by God. It's purposed by God. It's moving in God. And you see people coming and their lives are being changed. Uh, but somewhere along the line, that man gets a hold of something wrong and he begins to dabble in sin. Uh, various things. I don't have to say anything because I think some of you guys uh, know several 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 of these situations. And even though they're in sin, people are still coming to be to repent. Uh, people are still being healed. Uh, words of prophecy are still going forth in that church. Amen. He's laying hands and people are being delivered. All these things happen. I, you know, my biggest fear is that people that went to a church like that doubt their salvation or doubt what God did. Because they don't mind under, in their mind, they don't understand. But the but the brothers and sisters, we have to separate the work of the spirit from the spirit that of the of the person that that possessed it. So we have to separate the man, amen, from God. We have to separate this is God and this is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is moving, amen. But these are two separate situations. When somebody prays and somebody's healed, I'm not giving glory to elder so-and-so who prayed for them. I'm giving glory to God. Why? Because it's the work of God that's doing these things and not a man. Amen. And so some people have been, oh, I went to a church and, you know, I got there. I've been there a year and my life got changed and all oh, God is doing all these things. I was baptized in Jesus name. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I, I feel like the Lord called me to altar work. I'm doing these things. And then we find out for five years, remember they've been there one year, for five years, the pastor has been having a homosexual re a relationship. And now this individual thinking that what they had received was from pastor so-and-so now doubt what they have. Why? Because they can't understand that they need to separate the two. This is what I was saying. That increase belongs to God. He, he uses a man or woman. He allows us to take part and be participants in his work. Amen. But the work that's being done is not me. How do I know? Because Peter says this in Acts chapter 3, verse 12. Amen. Verse 12. Thank you, Montrese. Acts chapter 3, verse singular 12. Amen. And it says this, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Now, this is the uh, Peter and John are going to the temple. Uh, this is, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have a timeline to how much after the day of Pentecost, but they're going to the temple uh, to receive prayer. We all remember the guy that was lame since birth. And he then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, get up and walk. This is this. And so all the people, amen, saw what was going on because this was a, uh, I believe they were probably still in Jerusalem at this time. Um, and this man uh, is believed that he was there, amen, forever because it was okay for him to receive alms, uh, being that he had been, uh, you know, paralyzed, couldn't walk. And so the people saw this, amen, and they marveled. Now in their flesh, what do we do? I said we. We marvel at the man. Look at Peter. Matter of fact, saints, we all, we too often we say, look at Paul did this, Paul did that. No, Paul, God did this, God did that. Paul didn't do anything, amen. But one very critical thing is be obedient. 
Amen. But the work that was done, amen, was through his obedience. And guess what, brothers and sisters? If Paul wouldn't have been obedient, guess what the Lord would have done? He would have raised up someone else. He will not be without a witness. And even if the people won't do it, amen, the rocks will cry out, the word says. And so we, uh, we, we too often, amen, do this. And so Peter is careful, amen, to, to, to tell the people exactly what's going on. Don't marvel at me. There's no righteousness in me that can do this. He says there's no holiness in me. There's no power, no holiness of me. But what's in him, amen, was the power of God. Amen. Working through him. Amen. Because of his obedience. Amen. Amen. Peter was not going to receive no glory from the men and women. No way I'm going to receive this. I, you all need to know that what you have seen, amen, is by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's nothing in me, no righteousness in me. There's no goodness in me. I don't care how many times I fasted, how many times I prayed, amen, how many times I don't walk through the land, uh, how many times I went and preached at the prison, amen. It does not matter. Isaac or whoever has done these things, amen, it is never, amen, because of anything about them that these works can even be done. So we have to be careful to separate, amen, the man Amen. From the, from who it is, the spirit that's working through that man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what we have to understand, I want to just kind of touch on this idea of sonship. And it's a, it's a big old extra biblical idea. Very, very biblical. Very biblical. Not extra biblical as far as not in there. It's there. Uh, but just some of those big words that you might see in in some sort of Bible college or, or, or seminary, the idea of sonship. And we know that the adoption in us starts when God puts his spirit in us. That's, that's when the adoption process starts. And, you know, the Lord begin, has to begin to work for us because many of us, you know, you get, you baptized and you receive the Holy Ghost. I don't know how much time between there. It might have been the same night, might have been years. I'm saying that specifically to encourage people who are still waiting. Continue to wait for the Lord. He will fill you with the Spirit. Amen. But, you know, we begin to change and we begin to be obedient. We begin to be more disciplined. But these things begin to start working. Amen. For us. Now, one of the things that we have to understand is our character. The Holy Ghost and the power that comes with that Holy Ghost does not come once you receive a particular level of character. And what I say is that you might get this thing premature, not necessarily prematurely because God's time is perfect, so I repent. You're going to receive this thing and not necessarily know how to handle it. Yes. You see this all the time. People get, uh, they get gifts and callings, and they don't have the character to be able to possess this thing, and it ends up causing them to go berserk. And it's interesting that you, you feel, River Jordan, um, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, with God's power and authority, simultaneously. Mm. Simultaneously, you have his power and authority. And this makes you a powerful, not you, but you begin to, you, you, you can do some powerful things. But one thing that we have to be mindful of is that in this power and authority that we've been given, that we submit to it and we're subjected to it. When I was studying this, you know what came up to my mind? Is that scene in Revelations when we receive crowns, but we throw them back? Amen. That's what I think about when I, when, when I, when I read this. It's like, Lord, you're giving me a crown, but I'm not worthy of this. So I give it to you. I'm subjecting my crown unto you. Amen. Lord, you filled me with your spirit. You're giving me power and authority. I have spiritual gifts and I can do all sorts of things. Amen. But I'm still submitting and surrendering this unto you. Amen. That I may work a work. Amen. That you would have me to work. Amen. Subject it to you. Amen. That when I do whatever you've called me to do and I heal whatever, whatever that, that it happens according to your will. Amen. I never get myself caught up in thinking that I'm something. Because this is what I believe is going on with the brothers and sisters in Matthew 7, 23. It's just that they got this power and authority and they begin to think that, okay, well, I'm ready and I'm gone and I can go ahead and start using it. 
Now, I do feel that it's, it's, it's God's will that as we mature, amen, that we can go forth and as we've been given freely, give freely. I don't think that God is is, is giving us the uh, whatever spiritual gift you have. If if I had the gift of healing, I don't think God is saying, Brother Isaac, I'm going to give you this gift of healing, but I, don't, I only want you to use it once or twice. But that God eventually, amen, when I'm submitted and subject and ready, and when I have the character, that I'm using it freely. Talents. Like the talents. Perfect, because that's the exact parable that came up. The talents. We have one person that had 10, and they got gain. We have one that had five, and they got gain. And here's the other side of this coin. So the faith, thank you. The Holy Ghost is real. If the person got one, and what did they do? So here's the other side of the coin that these people that said Matthew 7, 23 can be. Because what I painted for you in the picture in the beginning was what Isaac always thought is that they were going out there and making a platform and doing all these things. But what about the other side of the coin? The brother that doesn't do anything. Come on. Ooh. The sister that doesn't do anything. Ooh. Lord, you fill me with your spirit. You gave me the you gave me the gift of, of a word of knowledge. But yet I'm so afraid, amen, to use my gift of word of knowledge. I'm so afraid what men and women might think. I'm so afraid of this. I'm so afraid of that. Amen. That I just hide it in my closet. I've had this gift of, of, of word of knowledge for 20 years. And not even one of my closest friends knows. None of the saints know. Amen. My parents don't know. There's a couple of secret brothers that know. Amen. Amen. This, amen. Matter of fact, when the Lord was dealing with me while I was preparing for this message today, I think this actually may be more probable than the idea of somebody going out and using it too much. Why? Because when we talk about, amen, the fruit of the Spirit, amen, this is, a, this is a gift of Spirit, completely different, but but Paul says that on the fruit of the Spirit, there is, against such there's no law, amen, I can't see God, amen, giving me the ability, amen, of a word of faith, but only wanting me to use it on select people, but him wanting me to use it freely, amen, and so the other side of the coin of Matthew 7, 23 is not necessarily the person that goes out there, amen, exploiting these gifts, amen, but the other person that has been given a gift and that is so afraid or so embarrassed or so ashamed, thank you, Sister Faith, that they don't do anything at all. Yeah. Now, from the words of their mouth, it almost feels that they we, we think that they might be the person that's doing too much, but they could easily just as likely. Well, I did it once, Lord. You gave me the gift of healing, and I and that one time I healed that little kid at the soccer field that got a little ankle injury, or that one time uh, you gave me the gift of faith and I stood up and, 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 and did this at the church, or you gave me the gift of prophecy, and that one time I told that, that one sister, amen, and she received it. But what about the other hundred times that the Lord asked you to do it? What about those times? Amen. Yes. Uh, John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Thank you, Jesus. I almost forgot that the Lord had gave me that bit of it, and Sister Faith reminded me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that the exact parable, that exact parable. God is good. God is good. John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said, said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he see the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. You know, it's interesting that Adam was the first son of God and disobedience got him kicked out and separated from the father. Now here we have an example of Jesus, the only begotten son, and who was never in the garden in the, as a body, in the body. Um, and he has this ultra, utter obedience unto God. And the beauty of this whole passage is, now this is when um, he, he healed, simply, I don't want to go into the too much, he, he healed the man, I believe it was the blind man, the blind young man on the Sabbath, and, and he wasn't supposed to do work on the Sabbath, and they considered that work because the person, that man had to be healed. Um, but the beauty of this thing is that, you know, we understand that Jesus Christ himself was born of the law and would be subject to it himself. 
and where he understands the Sabbath clearly, then he knows better than the Pharisees what should and shouldn't be done in the on, on a Sabbath. He was never concerned about what men would think. Amen. He was never concerned that, oh, well, we, you know, the church, we don't really do that. I mean, it might help that person, but the church doesn't do that. Or I don't want to go to specific cases, but I want to say that he was more obedient to God than he was to a, a rule that was being misinterpreted by the Pharisees. This is why, brothers and sisters, I I I I know that that God eventually wants us to be operating so much in our identity in Him that we are able to bless freely the way He wants us to, without any restrictions and without any oh uh, I got to go through this protocol. Amen. This is why we also ought to be instant in season. That if Amen, somebody prays and hey, uh, there's a brother at the hospital and they don't think he's going to make it past tonight. I shouldn't have to say, okay, wait a minute, let me fast. Nor if, let me just tell y'all, if anybody calls me your pastor and somebody calls you to go pray, don't, don't call and get my permission. You got it. And I say that some people may have never seen it, but some churches, uh, your pastor, you better call your pastor before you go pray for somebody. Uh, somebody wants a Bible study in your living room. You better call your pastor and get his permission before you teach a Bible study. And Lord, help me. Because I'm not trying to cause no division here. But what I'm saying, amen, is that there's such an obedience, amen, that we see in Jesus Christ that he can administer these gifts in an instant without worry. Why? And it's not because he has the power, but he says it clearly. I can only do what my father does. You see how in tune he is? This is where we ought to be. The Bible says we will be here, brothers and sisters, if we submit ourselves into the process, amen, that we'll be so in tune with God that I don't ever have to go down, amen, and see a person in need and say, Lord, uh, is it your will, amen, that I talk to this person because they seem so brokenhearted and desperate, but I'm so in one with God because my life is utterly obedient. I don't dabble in anything foolishness, amen. I, 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 my downtime looking at scriptures. Amen. When I when if you see me on a phone call, I might be talking to a brother or sister about some scriptures. Amen. When I when you when you see me in my I'm just so beating. Amen. That I'm in step with God. Amen. And this, my brothers and sisters, amen. What makes a son? When I was talking about the idea of sonship, amen. Jesus' sonship is not necessarily because God spoke him into Mary's womb. Amen. His sonship becomes because of his utter obedience that he can only do the things of his father. Now, I'm gonna tell. I'm, let me tell you. I don't know if my dad ever got on today. Amen. I don't think I look like my dad, but I have certain things like characteristics, things that I know how to do. And you'll be like, "Man, that's Isaac's son." We we know that God is not a man, so he doesn't have an image. But the Lord is. The Bible says that He's conforming us back into His image. Well, if God doesn't have a look. And he's conforming us into his image, then what is that? Adam was created obedient there. Jesus had free will to be disobedient, but he was obedient. Yeah. Our sonship, us making us sons of God, is not necessarily that we were baptized and we repent and receive the Holy Ghost. And I'm so glad you did that. I'm never discounting that. It's that. And, amen, I'm not negating the one. It's all of these things. I repented, I was baptized, I was filled with the Spirit, amen. And now I live a life that's utterly obedient to him, amen. That I only do the works of my Father, amen. So now, brothers and sisters, I can take it full circle to say that I have power, and because of his Spirit, I have gifts, amen. And because I'm so in sync with God, amen, because I'm obedient to everything he says, I never, ever, 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 ever have to be afraid. Amen. If on that day, the Lord would say, I never knew you, you work of iniquity, because I am not, amen, on my own thing, working iniquity. Amen. I'm living a life that's submitted unto this power, amen, that I've received. I am submitted, amen, to the own authority that God has given me, and I am obedient unto God, utterly obedient. 
can be like Jesus and say that so much worry, I mean, about the word, the deeds I do on this earth. Amen. Because I'm so one with God. So one and, and one and one with God. Amen. That the things that I do, amen, look just like him. Amen. The works that I do look just like him. Amen. The way that I talk, amen, looks just like him. I pray for this person. The Lord prayed too. Amen. I heal this person. One of them healed. I am one. Just like That's my message. Amen. And I just want to encourage everybody. You now are we the sons of God. John says it and he didn't lie. But at this very same time that we have our ring and roll, just like the prodigal son, you know, we also have to be like the prodigal brother. He never left. Yes. Matter of fact, the father tells him, Your brother your, your brother squandered everything, but he's still coming back into my house. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But everything that I have is yours. Come on. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yes. Because because I I I was obedient, Amen. I I stayed with the Lord. Yes. I I was submitted to his him as a son, as a good son, Amen. As does to a loving father. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so you know, brothers and sisters, we never ever 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 have to worry about being a Matthew seven twenty three person. Hallelujah. If we live a life that's obedient to God from the first place. <laughs> You never have to worry about should I pray for this person if that's your gift? Should I should I give this word of prophecy if that's your gift? When you have been so obedient to God, amen, that you've become one with him and you have been brought, amen, unto sonship, true sonship with God. Amen. Many of us ain't there right now, brothers and sisters, it's A-OK. -okay. You are actually qualified to be that though amen. because you've repented, because you've been filled with the spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we know that the, it's God's will that you will be a son. John said it. We're now we're the sons. Amen. Thank you. The only thing that's going to stop you from getting fully into sonship, amen, is your disobedience and you not willing to submit yourself to his presence yeah. on an often and continual basis. As often as you think. Amen. As often as you think. Amen. Amen. You know, when we even think about that scripture, when it says that perfect love casts out fear, right before that, he, I believe the, uh, John was talking about death. And that the whole thing about salvation is, is just about for in these times, in the Bible times, is, is not necessarily my gifts and, my, and these talents and joining a church. Amen. These people didn't want to go into nothingness in eternity. Uh, most people that came from, uh, came from there came from household gods and all sorts of other crazy things that God delivered these people from. Amen. They they weren't necessarily even thinking about heaven or hell. They were just thinking about nothingness, and they 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 already had a lot hard life. So they're not they, you know they're good. They were simple people. They're not like I want to go to the Lord because I want a new car. They wanted to go to the Lord because they didn't want to go into nothingness into eternity. This is Hades. Yeah, and so what they're asking, what they what they get from God is the hope. Amen of his eternal glory. And that when it's all said and done, amen, that that's where they'll be with him. They'll be with him with, through eternity. And, <clears throat> you know, we, we are the sons, yes. but we, we have to come into sonship. Yes. Yes. Many of us, again, don't, if you're not there, own it, own it. I'm throwing out a bunch of pair of shoes, free shoes. I'm Oprah right now. You get a pair of shoes. You get a pair of shoes. You get a pair of shoes. Everybody take a pair of shoes because this fits all of us. Amen. We have not come into sonship. But we can. Yes. You you are you are right now equipped for this. And so you'll inherit all things like the older brother. Amen. If you stay with the Lord. Amen. You inherit all things because I, I you stayed with me. You kept me. And now everything I have is yours. And so that older brother owned, amen, that property just as equally as the dad did, yes. even though the dad is living. Y'all hear that? Amen. So if he wanted to go do something with the sheep, dad wasn't tripping because that was yours. I don't have to worry about dividing nothing no more. You know, this is yours. This is your gifts. This is your stuff. This is your calling. This is your anointing. You stayed with me, you were obedient, and I've given you everything I have. Every power known unto heaven, amen, I have given it freely into my, into my bride. That's all of us. And you own it. And if we stay with God, then it's ours. We don't have to ask him, Lord, can I use my healing today? Lord, can I use my faith today? Lord, can I use my tongue interpretation today? Everything that I have is yours. You're my son because of your obedience. Because of your obedience. 
Not because you were, I, I love you, not be simply because I, yes, because you were repented, yes, because you had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but these Matthew 7, 23 people are going to be baptized and Holy Ghost filled, not walking with him. I know I've said a lot today. I made several points and I pray that somebody got something out of this. But I think my first point is don't ever be fooled by somebody that's able to work gifts and miracles because we believe that the Antichrist is going to be able to do these same things. Don't be deceived by signs, but to know the spirit, understand the words that somebody's speaking. Does this sound like Jesus? Does this sound like scripture? I mean, look at a person's behaviors. Look at a person's obedience. If you got a person that's full of fire that could preach, but they just they just live a kind of undisciplined, unobedient life. Amen. I'm going to tell you that don't that don't line up. That does not line up. That does not line up. Huh. Amen. Anybody got questions, comments, concerns? Go ahead, Sister Faith. Revelation 